Hello everyone and welcome back to One Man Stream. This is episode four and today we're going to talk about using data sources. And we're going to show you a, a matchup graphic that I use for boxing and you guys are probably thinking enough about boxing, but uh, we're going to move on to other layouts uh, later on. But this is what the uh, boxing matchup graphic looks like uh, in full screen. And what we're going to deal with today is how to bring in all these pieces of data uh, for each one of the fighters into this graphic. And that's where data sources come in. So let's go back to our show matchup button and we're going to show you what's going on behind the scenes here. What I like to do is I like to clear the other overlays before I bring in an overlay because I don't want something on top of something else. So the first two commands are overlay input X out and that's going to clear the third and fourth overlay and then that last command was to bring in uh, the matchup overlay. And when you activate the button that's what it looks like. Well let's look at the red fighter button. And you're going to notice there's two things going on here. One is we're going to select the first row and the first row is act actually designated as zero. And then what we're, we're going to do is we're going to preview that input and that's the uh, fighter matchup uh, promotional uh, with a promotional promotion name um, input that we're going to do. So we have two things going on with that one button. Same thing with the uh, blue fighter. We're going to select the first row. Again, first row is designated zero, and then we're going to preview that input. So what this does is it allows us to choose the combatants for the next fight without showing it in program. So let's, let's see what goes on here with the next button. It says select source next row, and that's going to be in our, through our spreadsheet that we're going to use, and we're, I'll introduce that in a little bit. And then that is the path uh, for that spreadsheet. Previous is just a, a different command uh, that we're using from uh, vMix. Data source previous row. And then again, it's going to show the name in the table. That's actually the path of the uh, spreadsheet we're using. And now on to the blue fighter. You'll see where it says name and table. This time, instead of showing red fighter, it shows blue fighter. And then on the previous, it's going to show data source previous row, and then it shows the Excel CSF, CSV comma separated values and blue fighter. Again, we're going to get rid of uh, a couple of the overlays before we bring the overlay in. And then this is where we can, uh, the command that brings it into preview, if we just want to bring it into preview and make sure we have everything set before we take it out to program. So that says preview overlay input X. And again, that's on overlay, overlay channel three, which is where I use a lot of my graphics in lower thirds. And as you can see, as I hit the previous button, it's, uh, going through the uh, data source list and now for the blue fighter actually that's next I apologize not previous and then when you click the blue fighter button again it brings you back to that first row and that is the uh, first fighter in the first row and this is actually what the uh, information looks like. And you got to be very particular there because that first thing where it says name, Excel, CSV, that is case sensitive. And I had some issues with that at first because I didn't realize that. And then the arrow is actually showing the path of where I have um, this uh, Excel spreadsheet on my hard drive. So how do you get to it? Well, you click the hamburger menu, then you go to data sources, and this is on the main vMix production. And this is all the information in that spreadsheet. And actually, this is the, uh, the data source that's brought in from the spreadsheet that I have on my OneDrive. And you're going to notice the familiar three tabs, Red Fighter, Blue Fighter, and then I have another graphic I use for solo stats. 
uh, but we'll talk about that in a uh, in a future episode. And what I want to show you here is you're not locked into using uh, those buttons that we created. You can also go to the data source menu and as you toggle through it will also change it on the graphic. So as you can see right now we're changing uh, the blue fighter just by clicking different rows in the spreadsheet. And then we'll go up and we'll change it to Red Fighter. And just by clicking, we can bring in different fighters as well. So you don't have to use the buttons you created. You can actually just use the uh, data source uh, spreadsheet. Okay, so where does that information come from? As I said a minute ago, it comes from my OneDrive, a spreadsheet I have set up on my OneDrive. And the reason I do that is because if for some reason that file would come become corrupted on my computer, I can always download it at the venue if I have it on my OneDrive. So it's just kind of a backup for me. And once again, you can see the Red Fighter, Blue Fighter, and the Solo Stats tabs. And all of that information that you see in front of you is going to be brought in to the graphic. And that is uh, what the graphic, again, looks like uh, in full screen. And this is the graphic that I designed in GT, to, uh, GT Title Designer. And it looks pretty busy, but once you get used to GT Title Designer, you can probably create this graphic uh, in about 30 minutes. And over on the right-hand side, you can see all the different components of the graphic. Some of them are just text fields, uh, like if you look right down the middle of this graphic in the red, the record height, weight, and age, that is actually uh, just text that I created, and that is static, that doesn't change. Uh, the fighter match up at the top, that's also static, that doesn't change. And then there is the logo that we use, and that is something that can be changed. I don't actually do that through data sources. I'll do that through uh, right-clicking on the title and changing it that way. As long, and also the um, promoter's uh, information there, I don't do that through data sources either. I just right-click on the title and change that information. This is some of the information that we do bring in through data sources. That is a Red Fighter or Fighter 2 Age weight, height, as well as the record, and then age, weight, height, and record for the blue fighter. And you'll see on the bottom there where it has the two names, the two fighter names, uh, that is also brought in through data sources as well as the flags um, of the uh, fighters of what country they represent. That is also brought in from data sources as well as the fighter images. All that information is brought in through data sources and I'm going to show you how we do that. All right, now back to our main vMix production and this is where the fun part comes in. Now we're going to start mapping the data sources. So all you do is you right click on the title there that we have in program. And we're going to select fighter or age fighter 2 and then we're going to go to data sources and this is where we bring in all the information and I've already brought it all in but you would just hit the drop down menus over to the left this is going to be weight and you'll see it's the uh, XLC CSV red fighter then you select the weight column uh, that's in the spreadsheet on this one here you would select the height column that's on the spreadsheet This is the record, and then you would just select the record column. And you do the same thing for age. This is Blue Fighter. And this is going to be the Blue Fighter weight. Blue Fighter height. Blue Fighter record,
and that's the red fighter name. Blue fighter name. The promotional logo, uh, I would have brought that in through the browse uh, key there. Fighter 2 image, that is from the spreadsheet. Fighter 1. And then the flag of both of the fighters, and that is all brought in uh, through the data source spreadsheet. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of One Man Stream, where we covered data sources. If you have any questions or you'd like to get a copy of the graphic, send me an email at tim at vercast.com. That's V-E-E-R-C-A-S-T. And I'll get back with you. Thanks for watching.